Okay, lastly, editing. Unless, I don't know, I didn't really go into any other kind of shooting, but editing. And there's so much other things, like I'm going to leave the rights for archive bit to the historians, but don't put anything in your doc you don't own or didn't get permission to, and have at least two credible sources, and Wikipedia is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is we control Wikipedia. I know my neighbors. I don't want them controlling my legal future. Mm -hmm. And then last, editing. What is editing? Editing is taking those sequence scene bits and creating that. Believe me, he had a lot more of that church. I'm sure he had the photographer being a photographer. When you go and do that as a producer, when you go shoot a scene, you don't know what you're going to use. Yeah, get the tile and the chair and the ch and then you end up using three shots. So there was a lot there, but you should get a lot. I think that you should be, you should uh, be judicious with your time and the amount you shoot. Why? Because it flows downstream. And if you shoot three hours of the church knowing full well you got one little scene, you know, you've increased your ingest time, you've increased the editor having to look at the stuff, you've increased your worrying about that you're not using stuff you shot. So there's a balance. And don't be afraid to go back. You know, that church is going to look the same as it did when the guy was there. If you need a wide shot, go back. It's really easy. Another thing I talk about shooting too is once you've decide, designed what you think the story is about, make a list of the shots you're going to need. This is really important because docs, and here's a great message that one of the students used it on the midterm, it was so cool. Um, <laughs> docs, or documentaries, are not a sprint, especially when you go to state and then go to national and look for changes between that to do more work. They are a marathon because you'll be living with this thing for a long time. You'd better like your subject. Um, so I'm not going to go into editing too much. Um, feel free to email me if you have questions and once you're going, seriously, I was a series producer. I got calls all the time. So if you're in a project and you don't know what to do, or you're, you, you know, you've got five different things you're going to cut and you want advice, call me. I'm really good at doing that to somebody else's doc. <laughs> horrible at my own docs. So, but that's boothmedia at gmail.com. You have any questions? I mean, we really didn't talk about editing too much because I, I would probably have to have final cut up there, which we could do. But. Uh, you know what? I, I actually went and bought a little one. And it, 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 that was a year ago, so now everything's changed. I mean, the, what's really happened in the last year is, and he probably has a better idea, um, is that the, the shooting to tape and card has disappeared. You're shooting to card. So I haven't really bought anything since that. But I shoot a lot right now for websites, and I back everything up on tape and card. Because every once in a while, when digital works, it's unbelievable. When it doesn't work, it's nothing there. It's not like tuning in the old AM radio. So I don't. But he might have some recommendations. And also, through the internet, a couple places I would look, Sammy's Camera out of LA, Sammy's, S-A-M-Y-S. -S. Um, and Amazon actually has a pretty good camera department, I mean, for price. And then there's a place called CNET, C-N-E-T. It's a website that does reviews of all technological stuff. And then when you go to their pricing, they'll list like five places and show the price. And so. And, and the key thing he said is back everything up. Yeah. You know, if it's not on two hard drives, you don't have it. There's yeah. nothing worse in the world than getting, you know, a day before your project and having your hard drive done. <laughs> That's true. And we do. I mean, we shoot hours and hours of stuff. And the first thing I do when I get back is I set up an overnight transfer so that's and then ship the other drive to San Diego where the site is one drive I drop one drive it's I've got everything over there the other thing I would say is do not edit on more than one drive back it up if you start editing a scene over there on that drive and a scene over there on that drive and then try to snap them all together you will discover problems keep your project in one place back it up 
onto another place, but don't play with it on three drives. Keep it simple. You don't have to tell all the stories. Decide what that one story is that you're telling. All right. Um, what tools do you use to organize the story? I mean, do you make storyboards? Do you, you said a list of shots, but what other things are good ways to organize? Um, I, I'll do, I'll, I'll, I do three things. When you're looking for funding for a doc, you do a treatment. What a treatment is, and um, there are huh, there are treatment examples in one of this book, but, but I think also if you just Googled documentary treatments, you'll find examples. And the treatment is, a, at least in the one I assigned, is a three to five page document that tells me your story. And mo the better ones have a paragraph at the top that says who, what, why, where, when. This is a, this is a documentary about this. You know, through characters and graphics and blah, blah, we're going to tell this story. And then uh, tell your three act story. Because it forces you to think about it. And it forces you to start jettisoning things that you think have to be in the doc. Believe me, you can always bring them back. It also gives you a structure that you can rely on later. I do this all the time of an outline, intro, act one, act two, act three, epilogue, if you want an epilogue. And what that does is it gives you a structure to say, you know, especially as you're going through the life of the doc. You know, that guy I just interviewed, he really didn't deliver what I needed on, on all that stuff. But that bite about what it meant to the state, yeah, I should get that in the beginning. Or maybe right at the intro. This was the most important thing that state had ever done. You know, it's a way of teasing people into your story. Or maybe you use that at the end. Funny how intros and, and, and exits are almost always the same. You know, big bites about little things. So I do that. I do an outline. The other thing I do is when I, I really do, and actually if you, your editing program helps you do this, after you do an interview with somebody, start cutting their bits. Give, give their bites a name, you know, podium, you know, whatever. So, so that that gentleman at the beginning, he had two or three bites in the whole doc. Well, give him a name. That's the podium bite, and that's the blah, blah, blah. I just write it down. I mean, you don't have to do it in, you know, and then you'll have, you know, Joe, and here are the five bites, man, that were really great. I don't know if I can use them all. And then Fred, you know, here are the six ones. And Matthew Whitaker is just a bite machine. Um, and what you'll find is then you go back to these things and you go, you know, this could work there or it could work there. So I'm going to put it both places for a while. And then I have to get rid of one. This one really works well. And I'm going to butt that one up and make it one statement because that really delivers the point. Suddenly now, now you're using, and this, you know, made that happen. So that's what I do. Treatment, outline, and then just a, a real rough list of my favorite bites and try to find them a home. All right. Good luck, everybody. Okay, thank you, John.